And today, I have the pleasure, I have the pleasure of announcing key nominations and appointments for the critical economic positions in the administration. A first-rate team that's going to get us through this ongoing economic crisis and help us build the economy back, not just build it back, but build it back better than it was before. A team that's tested and experienced. It includes groundbreaking Americans who come from different backgrounds, but who share my core vision for economic relief here in the United States of America. And given a fair shot and an equal chance, there's nothing, we all believe there's nothing beyond the capacity of the American people. Let's not forget who built this country. Working class and middle class people built this country, and unions built the middle class. And from the most unequal economic and job crisis in modern history, we can build a new American economy that works for all Americans, not just some, all. We need to act now, though, and we need to work together. You know, in the weeks since winning the election, Vice President Harris and I have uh, covered meetings with uh, a number of people. We convene meetings with labor leaders and CEOs at the same time, mayors and governors of both political parties. There's a consensus out there that as we battle the COVID-19 disease, we have to make sure that business and workers have the tools, resources, and guidance, and the health and safety standards to be able to operate safely. The goal is simple, to keep businesses and schools open safely. And for millions of Americans who have lost their jobs or hours and have had to claim unemployment, we have to deliver them immediate relief. That includes affordable health care for millions of people who have lost it and are in danger of losing it, child care, sick leave, family leave, so workers don't have to choose between work and family, relief from rent and student loans. We need to support small businesses and entrepreneurs who form the backbone of the communities that we live in, that are teetering on the edge. You know, there's an urgent need to fund state and cities so they can, the frontline workers on those jobs can stay in the jobs. You know, the founders are pretty smart. I, I could have gotten this lesson from the future Secretary of the Treasury. You know, there's a reason why all the states and localities have to have a balanced budget, but we're allowed federally to run a deficit in order to deal with crises and emergencies as we have in the past. And we have to keep vital public services running. We have to give lay, uh, aid to local and state governments to make sure they can have law enforcement officers, firefighters, educators, as we did in the Recovery Act of 2009. And right now, the full Congress should come together and pass a robust package for relief to address these urgent needs. But any package passed in a lame duck session is likely to be, at best, just a start. My transition team is already working on what I'll put forward in the next Congress to address the multiple crises we're facing, especially our economic and COVID crises. And the team I'm announcing today will play a critical role in shaping our plan for action starting on day one and move fast to revive this economy. They're going to help me uh, help us to help the country lay out my Build Back Better plan, a plan that an independent analysis from Moody's, a well-respected Wall Street firm, projected would create 18.6 million jobs. It's based on a simple proposition, reward hard work in America, not wealth. It's time to invest in infrastructure, clean energy, climate change, manufacturing, and so much more that will create millions of good-paying jobs. And it's time we address the structural inequities in our economy that this pandemic has laid bare. Economists call this current economy and recovery K-shaped. Well, like the two lines coming off of a K, some people, some people are seeing their prospects soar upward, while others are watching their economic prospects drop sharply. For those at the top, jobs have come back. And their wealth is rising. For example, luxury home sales are up over 40 percent compared to last year. But from those in the middle and the bottom, it's a downward slide. They're left figuring out how to pay the bills and put food on the table. Almost one in every six renters was behind in rent payments as of October. Let me be clear. 
with this team and others, we'll add in the weeks ahead that we're going to create a recovery for everybody, for all. We're going to get this economy moving again. We're going to create jobs, raise incomes, reduce drug prices, advance racial equity across the economy, and restore the backbone of this country, the middle class. Our message to everybody struggling right now is this. Help is on the way. My dad, you've heard me say this before, when he lost his job in Scranton when I was a kid, and we eventually moved the family not far from here, Claymont, Delaware, just in the outskirts of Wilmington, he used to say, Joey, a job is about a lot more than a paycheck. It's about your dignity. It's about respect, your place in the community. It's about being able to look your kid in the eye and say, honey, it's going to be okay and mean it. He also used to say, Joey, I don't expect the government to solve my problems, but I do expect them to understand my problems. This team understands. For Secretary of Treasury, I am really pleased to be able to nominate Janet Yellen. No one is better prepared to deal with these crises. I wish it weren't as much of a crisis, future Secretary. But she'll be the first Treasury Secretary who was also chair of the Federal Reserve, vice chair of the Federal Reserve, and chair of the President's Council of Economic Advisors. Janet is one of the most important economic thinkers of our time. She has spent her career focused on, on employment and the dignity of work, which is really important to me and to all of us. She understands what it means to people and their communities when they have good, decent jobs. Respect across being looked at by their neighbors and being respected, it matters a lot to them. And respected across party lines and around the world by Main Street and Wall Street. An educator, a mentor, above all, the daughter of a working class from a working class Brooklyn neighborhood who never forgot where she came from. Her husband, George, is pretty good too. He's won a Nobel Prize, but he's the one that married up. <laughs> Jan will be, <laughs> be the first woman to hold this office. We might have to uh, ask. Uh, Lynn manuel Miranda, who wrote the musical about the first Secretary of Treasury, Hamilton, to write another musical about the first woman Secretary of the Treasury, Yellen. So that's what I'm working on right now, Janet. <laughs> For Director of Office of Managing the Budget, I nominate Nira Tandon. You know, I've known Nira a long time, a brilliant policy mind with critical practical experience across government. She was raised by a single mom on food stamps, an immigrant from India who struggled, worked hard, and did everything she could for her daughter to live out the American dream. And Nira did just that. She understands the struggles that millions of Americans are facing. And she'll be the first woman of color from South Asia, from South Asia, excuse me, from South Asia. And, uh, and I think that uh, to lead OMB. We also have another one of those women as Vice President of the United States of America. And uh, so, look, all being very serious, she, she, she'll be in charge of laying out the budget that will help us control the virus and deal with the economic crisis and build back better. But above all, she believes what I believe. A budget should reflect our values. Again, quoting my dad, for real, my dad's people would say, Joe, let me tell you what I value. And he'd look at them. He's a high school educated guy, very well read. And he looked at me and said, don't tell me what you value. Show me your budget. I'll tell you what you value. That's what you're going to do for us. Man. As Deputy Secretary of Treasury, I nominate Wally Adierno. Wally is, uh, um, you know, Wally, I don't know. Uh, I tell you what, uh, Senator Warren really likes you. <laughs> she re highly recommended you, but I wasn't sure she worried I stole you as well. But uh, thank you for being willing to do this, Wally. A skilled leader and thinker on issues ranging from macroeconomics to consumer protection and from national security to international affairs. I've worked with Wally during the Great Recession. That was my excuse to the senator saying that's why I wanted to steal you. And I saw him tackle one big job after another. Deputy National Security Advisor to President Obama, Deputy Director for the National Economic Council, former Chief of Staff to Elizabeth Warren, 
where he helped create the Consumer Protection Bureau and uh, for, uh, Financial Bureau, which has done so much good. It's designed to protect consumers and working people from unfair, deceptive, and abusive financial practices. And now Wally will be the first African American ever to hold this post and the highest ranking African American in the Treasury Department's history. An immigrant from Nigeria, the son of a nurse and an elementary school principal, Wally understands everything we do is basically for the people, for families, hard working people, to understand their struggles and most of all their dreams. And he understands both. And I want to thank you, Wally, for being willing to do this. For Chairperson of Council Economic Advisors, I nominate, notwithstanding she was a very distinguished professor at, at Princeton. I joke, my, my children who went to Penn used to always kid about, you know. <laughs> but Cecilia C.C. Rouse, one of the most distinguished economists in the country, an expert on labor, economics, and race, poverty, and education, dean of the Princeton School of Public and International Affairs, a member of the Council of Economic Advisors to President Obama, an advisor to President Clinton at the National Economic Council. More than that, she's a proud daughter whose mom, a school psychologist, encouraged her to pursue her — pursue economics. And her dad, one of the country's first African-American astrophysicists who dared her to dream. She's done both. If confirmed, Cece will be the first as I mean, excuse, excuse me, the fourth woman to lead the Council of National Econ of Economic Advisors and the first African-American ever to hold that post. And as CEA chair, she'll serve as a member of my cabinet as well. As a member of the Council of Economic Advisors, we also appoint Jared Bernstein, an old friend who's been with me a long time, a brilliant thinker, a quick, quick wit with a heart as big as his head and a heart he got from his mom, an educator who raised him correctly. A social worker turned economist, Jared is one of my closest economic advisors and friend. He served as my chief economist during the vice presidency. He was there in that foxhole during the Great Recession, with the economy on the brink and our country on our back. I couldn't think of anyone else who I'd want to be on my side to face the challenges ahead. Jared will be one of the leading voices in my administration on economic policy. I can always count on him to deliver straight from the shoulder, as his hero FDR used to say, straight from the shoulder. The one thing I can assure you is working people will always have a voice with Jared in this council. As a member of the Council of Economic Advisors, I appoint Heather Bousset. Heather, uh, thank you for all the help you had in the transition team and getting me here. She's one of the foremost economists working to make a, sure we build an economy that works for all Americans. The daughter of a union family, it's no wonder she believes so deeply in the idea that uh, leave no one out, leave no one behind in this economy. During the campaign, I relied on her counsel on addressing structural inequities within the economy. And I'll do so again as president because the cent that's one of the central issues of our time. To this team, Thank you for accepting the call to serve again. You're uh, to your families and to your uh, — thank them for their sacrifices, because it's real sacrifice. We could not do this without you. And to the American people, this team will always be there for you and your families. This is family-oriented team. We've got to make sure ordinary people get a chance to do well, because they've never — when given a chance, they've never, ever, ever, ever let the country down. Eleven years ago, President Obama and I entered office during the Great Recession and implemented the Recovery Act that saved us from a Great Depression. I didn't see the map of America at the time, nor did he, in terms of blue states and red states. We only saw the United States of America. We worked with everyone, for everyone, and we recovered and rebuilt together as one nation. Vice President Harris and I will do that all over again with an outstanding team. They're ready on day one. And to the United States Senate, I hope those outstanding — these outstanding nominees will receive a prompt hearing and that we will be able to uh, work across the aisle in good faith and move forward as one country. So let's begin the work to heal, to unite, to rebuild an economy for all Americans. They deserve and expect nothing less. 
Thank you. May God bless you. And may God protect our troops. I now turn this over to the new team, starting with our next Secretary of Treasury, Janet Yellen. Again, Janet, thanks for accepting. Mr. President-elect, congratulations on choosing this outstanding team of brilliant minds, this economic team. Um, this is the right team for this moment. And to our nominees and appointees, thank you for your continued service to our nation. This is the team we need to deliver immediate economic relief to the American people, to get our economy back on track, and to make sure it works for working people. And as President-elect Biden noted earlier, completing that task could not be more urgent. Cases of COVID-19 are spiking. And beyond the tragic loss of life, the toll of this recession continues to mount. Across America, one in six adults with children say their families are hungry. Janet Yellen talked about food insecurity. This is real. We are looking at a hunger crisis in America right now. One in three adults are having trouble paying their bills, essential bills, the bills that need to be paid at the end of every month to get to the next month. And the number of open small businesses has fallen by nearly 30% due to this pandemic, while many others are hoping they can stay afloat until a vaccine is available. These are the struggles, the worries, that keep people up in the middle of the night that have them sitting at their kitchen table past midnight, trying to figure out how they're gonna make it work. But Americans are not united by their worries alone. They are also united by their aspirations. The aspirations they have for themselves, for their children, for their families, and for their community. Because no matter where you live, or what language your grandmother speaks, Everyone wants to be able to get a job and keep a job. No matter what your gender or who you love, everyone wants to be able to buy a home and keep a home. And no matter how you worship or who you voted for in this election, everyone wants to be able to give their children a decent education and allow those children to pursue their dreams, even during a pandemic. And Joe and I understand that. We were raised to respect the dignity of work. We were raised by hardworking parents who always understood the dignity of work and the potential, not only for their children, but of our country. And that's why I've always fought for working people, standing up for middle-class families who lost their homes in the Great Recession. Um, Wally, you, you talked about that. Families in California were devastated, but they were able to rely on their government and the leaders, as Joe always talks about, who needed to see their condition and speak to that condition. And that's the work that needs to happen now. And I look forward to collaborating with this extraordinary team to put working people front and center in our administration. These public servants, are some of America's most brilliant minds. They are proven leaders whose talents, achievements, and life stories, their life stories reflect the stories of the American people, and their stories reflect the very best of our country. And they not only have the experience, the expertise, and what is necessary to help end this economic crisis, but also what is necessary to put people back to work. And they also share in our commitment to building an economy, an America, where everyone has access to a higher minimum wage and affordable health care, paid family leave and paid sick leave, home ownership and capital to start a small business. An America where opportunity is within reach for everyone for all the people. So we've got a lot of work to do to build that America, and as Joe always says, to build back better. And President-elect Biden and I, together with this economic team, will be ready to hit the ground running 
on day one, because that is what this crisis demands, and that is what the American people deserve. Thank you.